We are going to look at how we can use the complementary slackness conditions to address the following question. Is x star equal to 2, 1 an optimal solution to the linear programming problem denoted by p? To use the complementary slackness conditions, we need a dual. So let's look at the dual problem for this. And we're going to have dual variables y1, y2, y3 for the respective constraints in the primal problem. And y1 can be free because the constraint is equality. y2 will have to be non negative, y3 will be non negative as well. So the dual problem is maximize 7y1 plus 1y2 plus 3y3. That's the objective function in the dual subject to. So the constraints are what we can get from the coefficients of each variable in the primal problem. So for the coefficient of x1, we have 2y1 minus y2 plus 2y3. And that's going to be less than equal to 1 because x1 is a non-negative variable. And for x2, we get the constraint 3y1 plus 3y2 minus y3. And this time is equal to 2 because x2 is not constrained to be non-negative or non-positive. And we bring this over here. So y2 and y3 have to be non-negative. Let's see what we can do here. If x star is optimal, then by the duality theorem, there exists y star optimal to d. So d is my dual problem, such that, well, they have to satisfy the complementary slackness conditions together. x star and y star satisfy the complementary slackness conditions. Okay, so what's going to happen? Well, the complementary slackness condition said if x star satisfy any of these, not with equality, then the corresponding y star value must be zero. It's easy to check that x star is a feasible solution. If we plug in x star into the first constraint, obviously it holds with equality because, well, 2 times 2 is 4 plus 3 is 7. And for the second inequality, I have minus 2 plus 3, well, that's 1. So that also holds with equality at x star. What about the third inequality? I have 2 times 2, that's 4, minus 1, that's 3. Again, x star satisfies this with equality. So we didn't gain any information looking at those conditions. Now let's look at y star. Well, y star must satisfy the constraint with equality because x1 star is positive. All right, that's the little bit of information that we can get. Uh, so since x1 star greater than 0, we must have Okay, so this must hold. That means that y star has to satisfy this equation as well as the second constraint from d. And we'll try to solve that instead and see what happens. That's just a system of equations. So y star has to satisfy this. Of course, we also need y2 star and y3 star to be non-negative. But for now, let's focus on this system. Well, what would be an easy way to solve this? Uh, let's try to solve everything in terms of y1. So this is a system and we can have row 1 and we can do this elimination. So I'm adding row 2 to 2 times row 2 to row 1. That gives us and row 2 we negate. And now let row 1 divide by 5 and row 2 b so now this is a basically reduced form so now let's stare at this if i set y1 star equal to 0 then y2 star and y3 star can be set to 1 and both are non-negative so set 
y1 star to 0, y2 star to 1, and y3 star to 1. Now let's, let's go back. What is this saying? Well, this is saying, so if we look here, y1 star, y2 star, y3 star is 0, 1, 1. We don't take the first constraint, but we take the second constraint plus the third constraint. And what does that give us? So if you call this 1 and call this 2, 1 plus 2 is precisely x1 plus 2x2 greater than equal to 4. Right? But notice that x1 plus 2x2 is precisely the objective function and 4 is precisely the objective function value of 2, 1. So this is saying that x star must be an optimal solution because every feasible solution, its objective function value has to be at least 4. But we have found one, in fact the one that we are given, has objective function value equal to 4. Hence, x star is an optimal solution to P.